Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live 10 at 10. A packed house with a burning interest on whether there should be an, uh, an increase on the age required to buy tobacco products in a Lakes Country community. Detroit Lake City leaders got an earful tonight on a proposal to change the tobacco ordinance. Dozens of people on both sides of the issue speaking out. Valley News Team's Cornelius Hawker just got back from DL. And Cornelius, what's the game plan for the city moving forward? Andrea, Mike, for the foreseeable future, the tobacco ordinance change is dead. Now, after hearing nearly two hours of people speaking for and against it, the city council voted down a first reading on, on the ordinance. Now, those against the ordinance really harped on the fact e-cigarettes and the products used with them were included in the proposed ordinance. A big takeaway from the meeting tonight was the fact both sides said they wanted to reduce the amount of young people smoking tobacco. They just disagreed on how that should be done and what should be included in the ordinance. If I was not allowed to buy a vapor product before the age of 21, I would still be a smoker. When I turned 18, I got my first vaporizer and quit smoking immediately as a result. I'm the daughter of a woman who started smoking at 14. As a result of her smoking, her oldest child has had more than 10 major surgeries related to things directly caused by smoking. When I was 14, because of all the activities that I've been involved in, I was around 18-year-olds quite often. And I can tell you that while I myself do not smoke or vape, I know plenty of other students that have gotten and get their cigarettes along with other tobacco products from older students at school. I think everybody here is really for healthy communities and the future of our youth. I think that we should trust our youth to make the right decision for their life. If we give them the choice, they'll, they'll make the right decision. Another proposed ordinance could make its way to the city for consideration. Now, whether that ordinance happens or if it will exclude cigarette e-cigarettes is a waiting game. Andrea? All right, thank you, Cornelius. Four states, California, Hawaii, Maine, and Oregon, along with two cities in Minnesota, Edina and St. Louis Park, have bumped the tobacco buying age up to 21. Custody of a high-profile baby was granted today. Ashton Matheny, Savannah Graywind's boyfriend and the father of the couple's daughter, Hazley Joe, will care for the child. Hazley Joe has been with Ashton for about a week after DNA test results came back. The baby was placed in protective custody after she was first found in the apartment of a man and a woman who are now facing charges related to Graywind's murder. While Matheny is still struggling with Savannah's death, his lawyer says today's news was cause for celebration. We're having a, a baby shower actually for him tomorrow. We just wanted to have a little send off and some, some happiness after everything. Graywin's family tells us that they've had a good working relationship with Matheny and they spent time with him over the weekend. Meanwhile, people living in the building where Savannah Graywin was last seen alive are pushing back against an online petition to tear down the building that they call home. It's an apartment building in North Fargo and nearly 2,000 people have signed that petition. But those who live in the building say tearing it down won't erase the crime and they believe efforts would be better spent on putting up a memorial for Savannah Graywin. Investigators are trying to figure out what started a fire that burned up a garage in Holly tonight. Here's a look at the fire in a video sent to us by a viewer. Fire Chief Justin Martin says that tonight's fire was at a home a few blocks from the Holly High School. Martin added that's when crews got there, or that when they got there, the garage was already engulfed in flames. It took firefighters only 20 minutes to put it out, but the garage is a total loss. No one was home at the time. No one was hurt. The impact of the Equifax hack could be hitting close to home for hundreds of thousands of people in North Dakota. The North Dakota Attorney General says that more than 248,000 people in the state could be affected by the data breach, and he's urging people to take immediate steps to protect against identity theft. The hack could put your name, date of birth, social security number, address, and even credit card numbers at risk. Officials say putting a fraud alert on your accounts warns companies of possible unauthorized use of your information, and it lasts for 90 days. They also recommend you check Equifax's website to determine if you are even affected. You also have the option of putting a security freeze on your credit report. We've got links and instructions on our website on how to check if you've been impacted. Just click on this story at valleynewslive.com. The focus remains on safety surrounding a busy street in Grand Forks where students cross to get to and from school. 
after a kid was hit in the intersection of 40th Avenue South and South Columbia Road last year, the discussion was including put it, uh, putting a pedestrian underpass in. However, money is a challenge for the city right now, which has more road projects than dollars to pay for them. Residents would likely have to cough up extra dollars through a special assessment in South End neighborhoods. What we try to do is, is we try to utilize the taxpayer money to do the best that we can with the money that's available. A discussion was held tonight on this matter. Another is slated for Thursday at 7 o'clock at Discovery Elementary School. Electric companies are breathing a sigh of relief after multiple power outages throughout the valley today. Nearly 800 Cass County Electric customers in South Fargo have their power back after losing it late this afternoon because of a contractor digging in the area. This after another contractor digging in West Fargo left nearly 900 customers without power for a time. And further west, another power outage occurred after a dump truck hit power lines on Highway 52 northwest of Jamestown this afternoon. The driver failed to lower the dump box when leaving a gravel yard and hit four power lines. That has caused a massive outage for Ottertail power customers in multiple counties. We're told that power was restored late this afternoon. The, highway, the North Dakota Highway Patrol is investigating that outage. Another win for the Trump administration's travel ban late today. The Supreme Court blocking a federal court decision that would have allowed thousands of additional refugees to enter the United States. For now, the administration can broadly implement a ban on refugees entering from six mostly Muslim countries, including Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen. Next month, the justices are scheduled to hear arguments on the constitutionality of the temporary travel ban. The picture of what Hurricane Irma did to the Florida Keys is becoming more clear. Federal officials estimate one quarter of all homes in the Keys were destroyed. Nearly two thirds of the rest have major damage and Irma's death toll in Florida has risen to 12. Reporter Mola Lenga is in Florida floodwaters with the latest. The Gilbert family vacation home in Lower Matacum Bay Key used to be three stories tall. There's three units here that have disappeared into the ground or they're behind it. I don't know how it collapsed. The Gilberts were part of the long line of Upper Keys residents allowed back in to survey the damage. In Big Pine Key, Irma turned a trailer park upside down and tossed hundreds of boats like toys. In Lower Cudjo Key, near where Irma's eye made landfall, Sean Street is still in shock after riding out the storm in her bathroom. Like it hits home, it's totally different, you know? And it's not just us, it's everybody. Power crews have fanned out all over the state, working to restore electricity to millions of people. This is the first time in our company's history that we've had all 35 counties, 27,000 square miles of our service territory hit. The areas around Jacksonville got the northeast brunt of the storm, where winds, surge, and rainfall are the strongest. Irma swamped the city with record flooding. More than 350 people had to be rescued. The neighborhoods along the St. Johns River experienced the worst flooding. Folks who live here say more than three feet of water in this neighborhood. But as the water recedes here and across the state, the massive cleanup effort is just beginning. Sister Margaret Ann from a Miami area Catholic high school took a chainsaw to down trees in the middle of a road. Stand by me. And stars pitched in too, participating in a hurricane relief benefit that aired on more than a dozen networks, with proceeds going to survivors of both Hurricanes Harvey and Irma. President Trump has announced he plans to visit Florida on Thursday. Your new Miss America is Miss North Dakota. That was the scene Sunday night as Bismarck native Cara Mund was crowned Miss America 2018. She is now the first Miss North Dakota to become Miss America in the 97 year history of the program. And as you might expect, it's been a whirlwind past couple of days for Cara, but she found time for a phone interview. She hopes her success will inspire future generations. I just want all those little girls out there to know that, you know, I proved that it doesn't matter, you know, where you come from, the number of people that say you can't do it. If you work hard and you're dedicated to it, you know, it can happen. Mond was in New York this morning and is expected to travel to Los Angeles later this week. She says she'll be back in North Dakota in a few months.